September 16, 2016. NASA's Curiosity rover beams back this ominous photograph of what appears to be a rattlesnake-like creature in a Martian rock quarry. While I was studying this photograph, investigating whether or not Curiosity may actually be in the Texas desert and not at all on Mars, I stumbled across this photograph. Taken August 5, 2015, the internet quickly named this one the Crab on Mars. While home to many species of snake, there are no crabs in the Texas desert. Upon closer inspection, I discovered that this creature has at least one extremely long tentacle, as you can see here, surrounded in green, leading me to conclude that these are both pictures of the same creature. The picture on the right is all-inclusive, shell, body, legs, and extendable feeler tentacle, while the picture on the left may be only the tentacle with the larger body of the creature hiding behind the rocks below. May 7th, 2015, Curiosity photographs this pyramid on the surface of Mars. Pretty cut and dried, really. Nature rarely makes right angles and never builds pyramids. However, intelligent creatures do. March 29th, 2016, cave paintings. Seen here in an enhanced version, these primitive characters share many similarities with those found on Earth. Indicating not only life on the red planet, but human level intelligence and bipedal physiology. And what intelligent civilization would be complete without its own Buddha statue? Most likely a trick of the mind, the similarities are intriguing. And here we have the skull on Mars. Most likely just a frickin' rock. The mind is hardwired to recognize faces in everything. Perfectly complementing Mars's pyramid complex, they even have their own sphinx, bearing striking similarities to its earthen counterpart. Would someone from NASA please explain to me how nature makes these? Resembling a broken down AT-AT walker from Star Wars, this structure is clearly the product of reasonably high technology. How much evidence is it going to take before people open their eyes? Every day new information comes out suggesting that our own solar system is teeming with intelligent life. The idea that any aliens coming here would have to be hundreds or even thousands of years ahead of us technologically is quickly disintegrating. I have made the case time and time again that most of the so-called aliens seen visiting our planet are only slightly more technologically advanced than we are. The ever-increasing mound of evidence that aliens exist throughout our own solar system suggests that aliens don't have to be super high-tech to get here if they already are here, allowing for the possibility that they are within our own range of technological development. Running parallel to my own low-tech locality of aliens theory, consider our own understanding of the path of evolution that human intelligence has taken on Earth. Apply that concept to the reported visual physiology of the gray alien. In the overwhelming majority of encounters, they exhibit dingy white skin, indicating a lack of melanin or natural sunscreen, most likely because either their home planet is very dark on the surface, or perhaps they live underground. The glossy black teardrop-shaped eyes are reportedly a second set of eyelids that function as an integrated pair of sunglasses. Whether through the natural process of evolution or by cybernetic integration, these auxiliary UV protectant eyelids exist to serve some purpose, most likely protecting their eyes from blinding ultraviolet radiation during occasional trips to the surface. Reminiscent of Vin Diesel in the movies Pitch Black and the Chronicles of Riddick, the combination of highly light-sensitive skin and extremely high light-resistant eyelids seems counterintuitive. 
unless you consider that they could be from a planet like Mars, where they would live the majority of their lives underground, naturally protected from the sun's radiation, but would have to occasionally travel to the surface, where without the UV protectant auxiliary set of eyelids, they would be instantly blinded. On Earth, we are protected from most of these UV rays because they are filtered out by our atmosphere. Mars, at some point we know, had an atmosphere much like Earth's. No one knows why it disappeared. The geologic feature on the surface of Mars, known as the Valles Marineris, is so large that it could not be created from any known geologic process. It is almost as if it is a remnant or scar left behind from some huge electrical discharge. Resembling that of a hyper-advanced, weaponized version of the HARP technology that we are experimenting with now, right here on Earth, a super-amplified version of HARP, or High Frequency Advanced Auroral Research Program, if deployed, could result in the complete flash evaporation of a planet's atmosphere, leaving a surface feature resembling that of the Valles Marineris. If this were to happen here on Earth, the contingency plan that exists under the Department of Defense states that humans would go underground, as they would be naturally protected from the lethal levels of solar radiation bombarding the surface. We would then learn to live by the geothermal heat produced by the counter-rotational movement of the Earth's molten metal core. If humans moved underground, eventually natural selection would determine that the natural sunscreen we now have, known as melanin, would no longer be necessary for survival, and evolution would shed it as junk DNA. Could this have been the story of Mars, a once great civilization on an Earth-like planet that destroyed its own atmosphere in a hyper-technologically advanced civil war? forcing the Martian population to split between those that survived by moving underground and those that managed to escape and begin anew on a planet nearby. Could this mean that not only is this the story of the Martian people, but our story as well, shedding light on the eerily similar physiological characteristics that we humans and gray aliens share. Perhaps these next door neighbors of ours that we all know as gray aliens are not aliens at all, but our own flesh and blood, the ancestors of our ancestors.